let's get this working. All right. Uh, hey guys, it's Pooed189 here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about longbows against armored knights. Now, um, there's been a lot of talk about it lately because of Todd's workshop, and you know, Todd's workshop, if, if you're watching this video, you probably know, you know, who he is. Uh, Todd's a guy who makes a lot of and like authentic medieval weaponry and he uh, did a test recently with a bunch of experts and it was on longbows against breastplates and uh, if you haven't seen it I highly suggest you go watch that and everyone's been giving their take on it you know Metatron, Scaligram, Matt Easton I am not nearly as I haven't made nearly as many historical videos as they have, and honestly, like, those guys, particularly Matt Easton, um, would know way more than me, and I'm not going to try to um, talk about anything that they've talked about. I'm talking about something that no one's talked about, and it's not really an historical kind of thing that you would, I mean, you wouldn't really know it from history. You would, it's just practical knowledge, and the practical knowledge is is numbers and by that I mean people don't often talk about in Agincourt um, even if armor is very good at blocking arrows helmets breastplates even if armor is very good at it it doesn't stop it 100% of the time and bodies add up in combat and everyone knows that the French knights got bogged down in the swamps and it people often wonder why longbow arrows you know actually won the battle if the armor is so good and like I said it's just it's just it just takes some math and some thinking now let's just make a little scenario let's say that there's a hundred longbowmen uh, and a hundred French knights and they are facing off from each other and they are about let's not put, even put a distance let's say that the knights ha will take about 40 seconds to reach the longbowmen and so the longbowmen have 40 seconds to fire now if we saw Todd's workshops video uh, with him and I forgot the archer's name although the archer is brilliant I, I can't believe I forgot his name but um he uh, shoots a crossbow and they timed it, him shooting a crossbow against the other, the archer shooting a longbow. And uh, I timed how fast it took the longbowman to shoot and it was six times in 30 seconds. So that's f five seconds every arrow. Now, if it takes 40 seconds for a hundred knights to make it to a hundred longbowmen, Let's say that each, not a volley because they're not shooting up in the air, but let's just say each, uh, each time the archer's loose, I guess we could say each volley, either way, each time the archer's loose, six French knights die. They die because they're hit, or, or they're incapacitated, and they die or they're incapacitated because they're hit in the shoulder, um, they're hit in exposed legs. they're hit if their visor's up. Let's say that six die each time out of a hundred. So if that is the case, then 30 seconds in, if six die each shot, and each shot is five seconds, then 30 seconds in, that is 36 knights killed or incapacitated, which means that's only 64 knights that are within 10 seconds of the archers and that gives the archers times to put down the weapons and pick up their swords and then they can start fighting them but that it just goes to show just you know it's a small little video but I just want everyone to understand that that is probably why Agincourt turned out the way it did because even if armor is really good and even if breastplates can take it if other parts of the armor can't, or if a breastplate isn't made top quality, or any other number of ways that an arrow, a longbow arrow, can get through 
to the guy underneath, even if it's a very small percentage, like six guys out of a hundred by each volley, the numbers add up. And by the time the French knights made it to the English lines, there was probably far less of them than began. Now, of course, there were still plenty of plenty of them because, you know, they had a lot of prisoners and that's why uh, the English killed all the Frenchmen because uh, they thought that the prisoners would revolt and kill them all. So, you know, there was plenty of them left, but it was still, not only was it, is it demoralizing when, you know, to get hit by a longbow arrow, even if you don't die from it, because, you know, that was a really loud sound when you heard it in Todd's workshop. Nice. That was full on. That was cool. Uh, you know, real loud clang. It was almost sounded like a bullet. But um, not only that, but, you know, there's still going to be plenty of dead French knights. Even if a small percentage each shot gets killed or incapacitated. So I just wanted you guys to think about that and just realize that, you know, it's not exactly like these Frenchmen are impervious, no one will die if, and they'll just head over there, or the Frenchmen, you know, will, like, hundreds die each, each volley. Probably only a few of them died each volley, but they added up because the longbowmen, particularly trained longbowmen, can shoot very quickly in very quick succession. So just something for you guys to realize and know. And, uh, you know, thanks for paying attention to the channel. And I also wanted to show off uh, the arming sword that I absolutely love. Uh, this thing is incredible. But, um, okay. Thanks, guys.